might come to know, you have been asking me, is this thing going to happen in India, DRGs? It will happen. It will happen. It has to happen. And if you're asking about, there's another concept of universal health coverage. You'll again and again hear about it in the TV and all these conferences. Again, for that to happen, you need case mix systems. If you're going to increase the GDP of this country, the GDP's contribution to healthcare, again, you need to have some kind of intelligent process to allocate resources. Otherwise, you're going to have a train or, 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 or you know, that is running towards some kind of uh, accident. The idea of value is actually a statement about what are the goals of healthcare. And in that, we have two frameworks. I'm, this is my last statement, and I'm just placing it in front of you. Is basically something called a triple aim. When we talk about what we are doing, each one, Professor Jean again pointed out, the nurses take the nursing decisions, the doctors take the, do the medical decisions, and so on. So this is brought together by idea called triple aim. Now, triple aim is by, a, by a do uh, Professor Don Berwick from Harvard, and he actually brings together three ideas. He says, you, the healthcare is w valuable if it addresses the issue of quality or patient experience, and it looks at the per capita cost, and also he m takes a leap and says it must take care of population health. Professor Jean again pointed, uh, you know, referred to the idea of ACGs or ambulatory care groups, and that's becoming popular because of this, uh, this uh, responsibility, accountability for the population. It, is, it, is, it's a, it takes a while for you to understand that the individual actually is taking accountability for the population. And that idea is evolving. It's becoming very famous all over the world, especially in Europe. And it's only a matter of time that we start uh, uh, listening to people talking about value-based healthcare. The value-based healthcare is Michael Porter's own conceptualization. He has six components. And then there is this Boston Consulting Group, which has joined with him. And they have now what is much more relatable. We have value-based hospitals. So that is something you will hear soon. Maybe it's difficult to do, but you'll hear about it soon. And finally, let me just uh, finish my presentation by saying that you need a platform to make changes, and the Directors Forum and the uh, seminar today is actually establishing the, that kind of a platform. So that platforms, you could have, for example, Professor Jean in the very initial lecture spoke to you about prospect payment systems, PPS. So that is some goal that you need to move towards. So you move from a fee-for-service system to a prospect to payment system. I'll quickly tell you what is the difference between the two or how it makes, uh, how it will make practical sense to you. If today somebody goes to the uh, hospital, he pays from his pocket or he is paid by a cashless system. That's the insurance company. But both these things involve something called reimbursement, which is retrospective. That is you, whatever needs to be done is done and then you get a, you bill and that gets paid. Now that's a problem because if you do that, you cannot control the number of activities. So these kind of things increase the volume of activity in the hospital. You know, the patient comes with one thing and he gets admitted for another thing, he gets a complication, he goes from the ICU and his bill is a different, you know, unexpected uh, number. So all these things happen because you have a fee-for-service system. It's not easy what I'm talking about, but the ideal system would be a prospective payment system and there's no way you can get there from here without case mix systems. I've already mentioned about individual health and population health. Again, it's very difficult to manage without ACGs and, and other similar case mix information systems. At the, I would just finish with just two more or less quotations. These, these, these phrases which I'm going to tell you today are very famous. They're very famous, so it's almost, there's no need for me to even put them in quotations. And one is to make the distinction between asking the question, which nurses uh, would be much more interested in. When you uh, approach the patient, we are used to, or we've been trained to ask the patient, what is the matter with you? President of IHI, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in uh, Boston, says that's the wrong question. You should be asking not what is the matter with you. When you see the patient, ask the patient what matters to you. That flips healthcare. It makes healthcare patient-centric. I'm so happy that Mr. Ramesh Sandhi was able to attend this, uh, this program because he will be the focus point in thinking about the patient's perspective. My last proposition for this session is to, as individuals, you need to ask, and I'm not saying one thing's bad or other thing's better, but you'll see the difference, and this is my appeal to you, is don't ask, what can I do for you? Ask, what can I be part of? And then that dissolves any barriers that you have between these personal questions of, is this really important for me? What can I do about this? All that. So try and be a 
part of something. If there's a change, join the change. And I hope I have convinced to you that this seminar was worth the time and effort that you took to be here. Thank you so much. And may I now invite Professor Jean <laughs> to continue his technical presentation. Good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, the, my third presentation. There is just one after. Huh? That nearly the end. Uh, how many time we have still until the end or until the final panel? One, one, one hour. One hour? One hour for my two presentation. Okay. So uh, I will skip some slide. Yeah, but for two presentation. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. No, no, no. It must be in this order. But uh, I'm sorry. I will have to skip slide. If not, uh, we will never finish, and uh, that will not be nice. Uh, so this. Uh, Roadmap uh, is for case mix uh, system implementation. That means uh, after pilot testing, okay? And this, uh, uh, I am working with a, a colleague uh, uh, from Romania, Dana Burduja. I use some of, of her slide. So uh, I can be, uh, sorry, some of the slide at uh, are easy to explain. Who is using or studying DRG, uh, it will be probably easier to list the country who didn't, okay? For more or less, everybody has done it. I have already shown that whatever the healthcare system is, uh, you see tax funded or health insurance funded, everybody is using uh, DRG and that's the case in Europe. You see, that's uh, when you have uh, any, in any places. So, uh, uh, the coding system used around the world. So, as I said previously, and I have to insist upon this point, for the diagnosis, it is rather easy in the sense that it is ICD. Okay. For the procedure, the other colon, as you can see, nearly in each country, they use a different system. Uh, to start at the beginning, you see the Austrian. You see Austria is a 10 million inhabitants country, so probably uh, Mumbai size. Okay. They have developed their own classification of procedure. The Australian use Achi, uh, and then all the Nordic country, but they are not very big, each of them, huh, use the Nordic classification of surgical procedure. Uh, and then, as you will have the possibility to, you see, then a lot of people are using ICD-10 AM, which is Australian modification, but is, uh, you see very, it's ICD-10, the four first character, and then some code added, okay? So it is a version of ICD-10. And uh, uh, what is important, even if it is a law, it's in fact what is critical for the grouper you use is the procedure classification. That's the only difference, okay? For all of them are based on ICD-10 for diagnosis. So that is that does mean that if you decide to implement ACHI, that means that you will have to use the Australian grouper. If you decide to use ICD-10 PCS from the US, that means that you will use an American grouper. Okay? And then I can Go on, you understand? So this is very the critical choice who you are facing, everybody is facing. And so uh, that's the grouping system. I skip on that for there are too much. Uh, another thing which is uh, 
rather important for an implementation is to use what is called cost weight, meaning that when you start with clinical data on diagnosis and procedure, you produce DRG, okay? You have uh, the length of stay as a proxy of the cost. You don't have the cost, okay? So, to be able to start computing a kind of cost by DRG, you must use what is called cost weight, which is a relative scale, saying, for instance, that vaginal delivery is one, and coronary artery bypass is five, relatively in the cost. And by using this cost weight, you can apparently compute a cost by DRG in your country and in each hospital, for you know the total spending of your hospital, okay? So you know that you have X patient in this DRG, multiply by the cost weight, then at the end, you do the sum of the cost weight, and then you di divide and you have apparently what is the cost. And as it is show here, in most of the case, you start by other country cost weight. If you take the Australian one, you take Australia cost weight. If you start from an American uh, cost weight, um, an American grouper, sorry, you take the cost weight of Maryland. Okay? So everything is available. That means that in the first step, the only thing which is needed are clinical data coded in diagnosis and procedure. And you can more or less borrow the cost weight to another system if you wish to develop and go on with the implementation. At that time, you will have to develop your own local cost weight. But as I explained for France, it is difficult. It is uh, a lot of uh, work and uh, uh, you cannot wait to have this local cost weight to uh, be able to do, to start the implementation. So main use of DRG, I, I have think I have already done that. So I skip uh, institutional responsibility pour, uh, for key technical activities. I think that is a good summary of what you have to do. More or less, you have to decide who is responsible for what. And uh, so, who is going to do the coding, collecting the minimum data set of clinical data, collecting the clinical data, validating and grouping the clinical data, you have a DRG group, then collecting cost data and modeling it for relative weight development, but you can borrow outside your country. It's not necessary to develop. And then designing the financing system, preparing the formula when you wish to use the DRG to pay. So uh, I think it, it will be a little bit long. You see, for each, you have what is the most common thing. The coding is done by institution taking care of patient. That means the hospital. The clinical data collection, of course, must be done at the Department of Health level. The grouping, the costing, and designing the financial system. I have already shown that. Uh, designing a pilot project. So that's it's a little bit different, you see. I was speaking about implementation on a country or a state. So what you have to do to select a pilot project, select pilot hospital, a coding and grouping system, and having in mind 
that when you have chosen the coding system for procedure, more or less, you have chosen your grouper. Okay, or in the opposite way, if you wish this precise grouper, take the coding of procedure related to this grouper. It is completely twin. Okay, and ICD-10 is not an issue. 